myself. All right, so we're at A7G's tea and chat, August 3rd. Uh, welcome back to Nolene Kanaswe. Um, she's a really well-respected community member here in Ottawa. I always see her around supporting women and youth. She's a 60s group survivor. And I think she's one of the only guests of honor we had that actually shared about tea, <laughs> which I really love, <laughs> considering this is tea and chat. Uh, and yeah, I always learned something from her amazing storytelling, and I'm really excited to hear what she has to say, but I'll let her introduce herself in her own words. So, Bajo Ani Tansi Kwekwe Wache Sego, Elaine Dishnakaz, Maingan Dodum, Pelicaneros, or Denair Beach, Donjaba, but I live actually in the Ottawa region, so Ottawa Aki. Um, I'm a mother and I'm stepmother. There's all these different, like, different ways of bridging who you are. Um, I've been married now and with my husband uh, 22 years actually this August. So, and we're at the um, Wild Rice Moon. And I shared um, earlier um, Wild Rice is um, a vessel of the water. That's the translation, uh, min, mino, mino, no min, which is um, the, the wellness within the seed. So when I think of wild rice and, and I think of moon, I'm always thinking, you know, as a survivor, but knowledge of the many spaces of where people and, and within community and nations and indigenous nations and, and uh, the, the generations from before to the generations coming, I'm always thinking, you know, how do we, how do we, um, how do I, how do I identify all of me? Not just like within that moment, like how do I eat a bit of the culture or tradition or language back in? Because I didn't always have that. And now that I'm making different efforts, um, I keep this book around and it's uh, by Neil McLeod and it's 100 Days of Cree. And I'm always, I pick it up occasionally and I'll just open it up and I'll like read and, and, and this one, when I picked it up, it was uh, medicine. And Mishgiki is medicine, right? So um, a key, so it's asking the land to give you something, to give you and, and bring you some wellness. Nahi Yaoi Mashkiki is Cree medicine, like the first person's giving to medicine, to, to each other. And when I think of Neheo or Anishinaabe or Haudenosaunee, um, or like they're all interrelated with our creation stories, like first being, right? And when we're, when we're always in that place of mia uh, kuas, like to smudge ourselves, um, we have to remind ourselves that, um, that it, like even lighting our sage was outlawed. And we, our medicine started being outlawed in the 1920s and 30s. Um, we have in our different communities and conversations where we were legal free people with land legal free people with land and that's sometimes forgotten because of the different policies that came in uh, even though um, 1867 and 1864 started transitioning us to specific plots of land if you know your treaty and know the conversation of what is in your annual treaty, because right now we're at treaty days within communities, right? And wild rice and beaver and moose and deer and, and candy and all these different things and bannock, you know, um, are all being offered at, at our treaty days. And sometimes like, it's like, what, five bucks, that's it? You know, like five bucks, five bucks. And I imagine in, 
1908 when my my treaty was signed like five bucks is a really big deal and then we have the conversation what do you get on your treaty date is it three is it five is it seven do you get your gun as in the treaty do you get your um gasoline or your five white gift of your salt sugar flour uh, lard and milk or do you just get five bucks and a feast but then you'd have to go all the way home to get your five bucks if not you got to contact your local indian agent agency to sign up for your five bucks actually mine's seven you know that mine's seven i haven't collected in like almost 20 years so seven times 20 like i'm gonna make 140 bucks right for not claiming my treaty dollars so i'd rather collect like after so many years and then like, okay, now I'm going to get like a, a really good coffee and I'm going to get, you know, and that $7 or $5 was to sustain us for the year. Like over a whole year, all that money, right? So in 1908, five or $7 was to sustain us the whole year. Now we can't even go like an hour. <laughs> Like, I don't know, I got, got up this morning, I went and got Americano and a muffin, I think it was. And I think it was like eight bucks. So like, I spend my treaty dollars like every day at breakfast. <laughs> so it's so those different places of, of acknowledging, you know, like different ways that language, language and our teachings internally and generationally and intergenerationally and what we call blood memory remains it remains in us and sometimes we didn't know we know something until somebody says something and then we're like oh, i knew that like how did i know that nobody told me that i didn't do the hollywood version of sitting in front of an elder right well actually our version is we've talked to each other the whole time and within our traditions we've been talking the whole time whether it's ceremony song cooking fishing learning even how to fillet where to get the berries like right now like people are posting oh got got my thing of like blueberries right and we're like oh, where's the patch right i wonder if i can know when i look at that picture where i know where that patch is and even in, in, in what they call this social media world, right? Social media world. And we're always looking and going, where are they? Now we just know a little bit more because there's that locator on our phone. But sometimes these different things help us. And sometimes it's, it's, it's being really consciously aware of when. When to turn it on and when to turn it off. And I always recommend, as my sons help me a lot, of, of um, turning off all notifications so that you're in more of a control place of when you want to learn. You pick up the book, or you pick this up, or you go do something. Do something different that says, I don't have to do all my learning through this thing. You bling it up for sure, but you don't have to do all your learning through this. And that, that sometimes challenges this place of talk, of breathing, social skills, and addressing. Sometimes even we weren't even given those social skills. Of how do I even talk with one another? And now today with COVID and Zoom and these different webinars and meetings, you know, like we still can share with one another what has been done and where we're going to keep growing because we have every right to, to know that our relations have lived through pandemics before. And we are the survivors of many pandemics and annihilation and genocide. And we come together in these ways that 
that build a, a gentler place to share with our children, I remember when. And then you carry that knowledge. I remember when, when you become that grandparent, when you become that great grandparent. And that's that looking forward further in this life and looking up at the sky where the Big Dipper is and knowing that even during a pandemic, there was a comet, a comet that, that flew across the Big Dipper and it only does that every 6,000 years during the COVID. So all those just different wonders of, of this life, anxiousness, sadness, depression, goodness, gentleness, reassurance. And um, it's definitely, you know, brought us to a different place of how do we even reassure we're going to be okay? And the best I can say is some days is just remind yourself or say even to yourself, I'm okay. I, I'm getting through this. I don't know how, but I'm getting through this and keeping it as simple, simple as possible. Right now, my son is, is making some nice fish. Hello. Come on. Um, and we're we we're, we're we're in a different place of, of uh, asking each other as family members, you know, like what do you want as opposed to putting it all on one person's shoulders. And me, every moon, I want fish. Like I don't know what it is. I just I want I want to I want to eat fish all the time, you know. But it's summertime. We normally have fish, so we're having a bit of fish and we're having a bit of uh, deer meat. And we're having the zucchini that I, I got from the uh, market. We got fresh corn. We have a bit of like probably rice that we'll make and I'll add some wild rice into it. And that's our feast plate for tonight. And it's like the many moons that got here that, that, that each nation named in different ways of our migration and subsidence. Like subsidence of this is what you need to eat to get to the next season and to the following seasons and sometimes that becomes repetitive but remind yourself when you're eating what they call real foods it does help us in long ways than we, we even imagine and um, there's also this new one um, that I found that was really neat and it gives you like really solid uh, places of where to where to eat eat your food and I really really like it so I'm going to add it to our group chat after so that people can can see it for themselves because you know those are the different times where where something uh uh gives a, a place of that's what I was looking for and we have every right and it's um eating with the seasons on a schnabek and it's the great lake region so you can make it like according to your region like in this area we eat more of this uh the nuts and the apples would grow at this time but you, you know it can always change so for the wild rice moon and that's what i was looking for was like you can't just eat wild rice like i mean eating wild rice is great but there's more to that month of august called the rising moon so in the rising moon Sometimes we have seasonal. Um, so wild rice is the Anishinaabek as Minomen, is a part of the Anishinaabek migration story as it came to be known from the prophecies. The seven fire prophecies was given to the Anishinaabek from the spirits. The first fire claimed, you will know the chosen ground has been reached when you come to the land where foods grow on water. Great migration westward, they settled in the Great Lakes region where they came across the food that grows on the water. So seasonal fruits and vegetables to eat at this time, apples, basils, beets, bitter melon, blueberries, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, carrots, 
and all these different things, including and my favorite, watermelon, wild rice, winter squash, zucchini, all these different things. And in there is that different, different conversation of how do we eat back our culture? Like really provide concrete nutrition because these were the foods that we would take to each other. I know how to make corn, beans, and squash. I know how to make carrots. I know how to make cantaloupe. I know how to make bitter melon that I can give to you. And seasonally, we, were, we would be getting ready right now to go get, because we're almost at the end of sweetgrass, and then the stage starts in this region. There's different times. And fall, harvest is the September for the tobacco leaves but you can see the wild tobacco now on the sides of the roads you can also see the burdock on the sides of the roads now you can see that the the spruce tips are done from spring because that's a spring medicine so that's that conversation of all these different medicines that got are going to get you through the plantain you pick it now the birch bark is at different times for different reasons, right? The different places of why and how we do that is interrelated with taking us to the next season, taking us to the next following four seasons, right? And if we don't know, then we, we're missing something. But the more that we tell each other, then we all will be on this place of, oh yeah, I remember a little bit too. And some of it, you know, I've had to, you know, utilize, you know, this Google place, right? Like, how do I, how, how do I even know what moon it is? I know it's wild rice moon because yesterday I was talking to my cousin on Facebook. Yeah, we're going out to the patty. And that was when I found out that I'll be eating rice that has been in my family since 1989, no, 79. So I was 13. So that's, that's really nice, you know, those different places of, of how long different things or traditions or ceremony or practice or that's just the way it's done in our family, including making foods for each other. And I'm getting food all the way from Saskatchewan over here in the big city of Ottawa. And knowing, you know, like... My grandpa's hands were the ones that touched those seeds. My relations, you know, got the seeds or the rice into the boat and harvest it in a good way so that they can feed a relation that feeds the further relation, including their nephew, including A7G when we bring it to the gathering, right? And you don't know because that's that place of we didn't know, but now we know more. And so I look at, at wild rice in a good way, always like that's home to me. And wild rice, I think, is, is, is those places of within uh, prophecy or different places of, of how we will always self-sustain each other, how we will always be encouraging to say, you're doing good. I know some days it gets hard but we're gonna, we're gonna live through this. And sometimes we're not even sure how we're gonna live through it, but we do. And, and we have those different places of prayer, different places of prayer that we didn't know that people were offering a kind prayer for us. And, um, and, and it gets, you know, into us in, in different ways. Like I think the ones that prayed for me to be curious about how do I know this life but how can I know this life better you know and you help me with that too because you you help me get bolder and that's a good place because I don't need to be quiet all the time I can speak up I have every right to speak up but I also have the right to really listen really listen to to those questions that are out there because if they're asking that today 
And I asked that maybe 20 years ago, and maybe my relations asked that, then eventually we'll be able to answer those places with each other. So, so um, I'm not going to talk for a long time. <laughs> But I think that's what I'd like to share with you today. And I thank you for um, asking. Um, I'm always really shy because then I get really like my anxiety space, right? Um, the value of what is said. Uh, do I know enough? I always wonder about that. But that's a, that's a really old place. And I remind myself it's okay. Even if you don't know enough, it's okay to share gently what you do know. And, and in that place of, it's okay to know just a little. I've seen and spoken to a lot of different uh, elders and family members and even my, my in, interrelated with my relations. And they were like, I don't know very much. And I'm like, but you know a lot. And they were like, not really. I know a little bit about this that we could talk about, but I don't know everything. And that's where I go with songs. Like, I don't know, like, I'd love to know songs. I'd love to know, you know, even bird songs, seed songs, calling songs, morning songs, new life songs, breath songs. Uh, but the songs that I do carry, I'm really grateful, you know, because they were given. And, and then I share those songs as, as best as I can. And um, that's what I'm going to also is bring out some of those different songs that because the way I learn is through reading also. Right. So I read a lot and then I look at it again. And, and this is the second time I'm reading this book. It's by my girlfriend, uh, Colleen Cardinal. And it's about the 60s scoop and it's uh, raised somewhere else. Um, a 60 scoop adopt the story of coming home because we don't have enough of these either and that's that place of how do we come home we can come home at any time I tell people we've always been home we're the home but sometimes we need that validation of but I'm related to you and this is how I'm related or we take in family you are my niece, you are my nephew, or you are my family, you are my chosen family. And that's a good place because it, it relieves that place of I'm not alone. Because I think that's, the, that's that assimilation policy place, you know, that, that we started to really believe in some worlds. But I always remind people, the tree life has been waiting for us to acknowledge just like when they, when, when, because I have a big tree outside my house and I love it because all those birds are in there and squirrels are in there and we make sure we got enough food for the bird feeder and get mad at the chipmunk because he's taking the bird's food, but the chipmunk's got to eat too. And, you know, just those little small things that bring groundedness joy to see life. You know, because this chipmunk started coming when it was just little. Now it's a little bit bigger and a little bit fatter. You know, that's good. You're getting the food. You're getting the substance you need. And you belong. You belong in my yard, even though I get mad at you. You know, but there's always going to be enough. And wild rice definitely tells us there's going to always be enough. You just got to do a lot of hard work to get it. Just like any hunt or migration or growing up, you're always going to be enough. So that's it for today. But I thank you for listening. And thank you, A7G, for all you do. And everyone that comes and those that will watch it later, I thank you very much. And, and um, if I've offended or, or I apologize, I don't mean it to say anything that means harm or challenge. I just offer a little that I do know. So, English. Can ask him. Hi, hi. Um, Miigwech, Elaine. Um, I really appreciate your teachings about food. I really truly believe um, we are what we eat, and we should definitely start eating more of our traditional food. Mm -hmm. um, I think it really helps our spirit. Um, 
I don't have any immediate questions um, for recording. How about you, Kaylee? <laughs> I put you on spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm just going to turn off the recording. Uh, we can check out in a good way.